Hello everyone, welcome to our free yoga for the day. Today I wanted to share with you a few different styles of yoga that can be helpful right in the middle of the day. We might have, have a full belly, we just finished our lunch, we've been sitting at our desk for a prolonged period of time and we're just feeling a little sluggish. So I wanted to show you some few things that you can actually do yoga inspired either in a desk chair or I just have this uh, stool here that I'm gonna use as a traditional chair. So a chair that doesn't have wheels. So this is a computer desk chair with wheels. This we're gonna be using as a chair that you would have in your home without wheels. I'm also, as always, love to blend those essential oils uh, into our practice. So I'm going to begin in a meditation as we always do with a line, which is a centering blend. Um, after we're finished with that, um, anchor when we move into our Shavasana inspired pose with our chair. I'm going to offer that and then a rise will help us to come on back. Great oils to utilize. So we have a, the arise of citrus. It wakes you up. It's wonderful to finish a practice with. The anchor is earthy oils. So they help you to sedate and calm down. And then a wine is a blend of all mints, citruses, and florals. And that really helps you to unlock for a wonderful meditation. So I'm going to be sharing again, for any of you coming in, we are doing some chair yoga today. The chair yoga that we will be offering today is with two different things. I wanted to show you how to utilize a typical desk chair that you might have with wheels and that moves around. And then here, this would be the model I'm using today for a chair that does not move around, that is, has standing legs for the chair. So I'm going to just start with a wonderful centering meditation in our typical chair. So in meditation in a chair, you actually want to feel like you are relaxed. Now, if you feel like you can't put your feet firmly on the ground, if you have a desk chair, then right, you can adjust the height and allow it to sink down. If you don't have a regular chair, yoga blocks that I show a lot in my practice, as well as I've been showing you how to utilize books in your home, you actually would want to place books under your feet to get to the point where you feel like you can rest without your hips or your legs bothering you. This will take any pressure off of your low back. So even if you needed extra height and more books than we have here, this is really beneficial to allow you to stay in alignment. Quick tip, especially when you're not in yoga and you're just working at your desk. We're gonna find our way to that nice easy seat where you're in alignment and taking in a nice deep breath. <sighs> nice deep breath. <sighs> Last one. And then allow the hands to rest down on your thighs. If you have arms to your chair, they can rest on your chair. So we're gonna find our way to some nice deep breaths today. Allow the face to soften here and just begin to breathe in and out through your nose. As you breathe in, feel the belly expand. As you breathe out, feel the belly relax. Just moving so you can feel nice and aligned. So you can really sink into your chair and your breath. Feel the breath in, belly expand. And the breath out, belly relax. Finding your flow here. A deep belly breath is wonderful to do after you've eaten a big meal to aid in digestion as well as wonderful to do if you feel like you're getting a little sluggish sitting for prolonged periods of time. Now all together, one more breath in. And exhale as you begin to bring your hands towards your heart. 
I'm just setting an intention for your yoga practice today. Could be a single word that helps you stay present or focus on how you want to feel after class. Sealing in whatever that is for you so you can generate that together with us and take it off of your experience today into the rest of your day. We're going to seal all of these together with a full round of breath, breathing in. And exhale, head moves towards the hands, mind and heart, honor and acknowledge your intention. The chin to chest, the hands relax back down. Just begin some gentle neck rolls. Again, I like to do just side to side here. Trying to stay tall in your chair. If you need to readjust. Getting nice and tall. And I'm gonna show you an awesome stretch utilizing your chair here. So next time, chin to chest, pause. You're gonna roll on up your vertebra. You're gonna take your right ear to your right shoulder. Now this might be enough of a stretch for you. If you wanna deepen the stretch, depending on how your chair is built, if you have an arm or not, you wanna find a way so you can grab the bottom of the seat of the chair. And then you wanna just pull. Nice deep breath here. Belly breath, making sure you're not chest breathing. That'll give you tension in your neck muscles. We wanna keep the neck relaxed here. And then release the hand, chin rolls down, and then stack back up. Really feel tall as you stack. Then left ear, and then allow yourself, depending on what feels more comfortable, just hold on to the side of your chair. Nice deep breaths. Belly breaths. And then relax the hand, chin to chest, and stack on up. And a few just shoulder rolls, rolling up, back and down. And then the other way. And utilizing our chair for a twist, you're going to take a nice deep breath and feel tall. And the next time you're going to twist to the left. Now if you have a handle here, you can hold on to the handle and then you can rest your hand. I'm going to show you from the side view using the back of your chair, using here, or you can use the bottom of the seat. This will help you to get a deeper twist, but breathing into the spine, either bottom of seat or handle. Nice deep breaths. And then unravel. All right, inhale, feel tall. And exhale, twist to the other side. Again, utilize the handle or the seat. Breathing in, breathing out, inhale, and exhale, breath in, and breath out, one more, and unravel. All right, we're going to find our way into a wonderful forward fold utilizing our chair. So you're going to want to take your knees nice and wide. And you're going to slowly then begin to ragdoll forward into a forward fold. So you want to feel your feet planted here. Oh, yeah. it's in my chair. <laughs> it's coming apart. <laughs> so feel your head and neck relax now. You want to allow the head and neck to surrender. You can even shake it out. Yes and no. And plant your hands down. Now if this is way too much for your hips, you either lower your chair if you have a desk chair with hydraulics or you grab those books for a little more height if you need more height. Take some deep breaths in. Side out. Deep breath in. One more. And then slowly, slowly, you're going to begin to come back up. Now the way I like to come up is one hand to thigh, other hand to thigh, and then slowly, 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 stacking on back up. Now we're going to move our desk chair away and we're going to utilize some postures we can do with a traditional chair. So again, I just have a cushion here that mimics a traditional chair. You can just have a regular four-legged chair. 
but I'm going to be showing you some modifications today. So this is great for people with injuries as well as anyone that's struggling with inflexibility. So we're doing a traditional sun salute now, and a traditional sun salute includes a few postures you've witnessed in class today, or sorry, not today, throughout our sessions together. So inhale, arms rise, and then exhale. Instead of folding forward to a forward fold, you're going to plant your hands down. This is an awesome opportunity for people that are a little bit more older or have low blood pressure. Inhale, you want to gaze forward and exhale. There's a gentle fold, but if you notice, I'm not giving myself the capabilities to bring my head and neck all the way down. So if that forward fold you just did on the chair made you lightheaded or you have low blood pressure, this is a modification of this, which you've seen me perform in traditional sun salutes, modification with the chair. And then from here, we would step back into downward facing dog. Now, if you have a chair that doesn't roll, is not on wheels, you can do a modified down dog. Great for people with shoulder injuries or had shoulder surgeries. You want to activate the hands. You want to take some nice deep breaths. You're still getting the stretch here. You can step back, but get to the point where you feel like you're grounded. If you go too far back and you feel like you're out of balance, you went a little too far. And you take some nice deep breaths here. Now again, this is mimicking this, which is downward dog. So again, great modification for any of you out there that need a little bit more help with the shoulder area. Nice deep breaths here. So we're going to roll forward now, and I'm going to show you a modification of push-up pose using a little more height. So we're in what's called a chair plank. So full plank, you've seen me in class work on before. You have that nice, strong, straight back and body, and then you can roll forward on your toes, and that's when we go down into chaturanga. Utilizing this can help you build up strength to get to chaturanga with more alignment. So we just came into chair, down dog. If you want to come into chair, chaturanga, now if you notice, I'm up on my toes, so my heels are lifted, squeezing my shoulder blades together. Now I'm still not sinking in or popping out, just like a regular plank, but I'm getting that activation right here without as much intensity on my wrists, my elbows, and my shoulders. And then push on back. We're gonna try that again. Zip up the lower core though, and if you move forward, this is gonna help you figure out what muscles to fire. So that when you wanna work in a traditional yoga class and stay in alignment with chaturanga, you're able to roll forward, stay in alignment, and keep the shoulders over your elbows as you lower. I'm gonna show you lazy chaturanga that I see in class all of the time, which is this, <laughs> which is lazy chaturanga, but it also is putting pressure on your wrists and elbows and shoulders where it should not be. So I always say in yoga, if you can't do it, come to a knee plank. If you wanna be able to get to this point where you have the strength and capabilities, <sighs> chair plank is a great way to start. Now you can even play here into different things with balancing. So we're gonna take our left toes into the floor, root down, lift our right leg up. Go down and lift our left leg up. Go down, pressing on back. Walking those feet back. Inhale, straight spine, gaze forward and exhale, gentle fold. We're gonna do that again using the chair. So inhale, straight spine, exhale, press on back, down dog. Nice deep breath in, nice deep breath out. Now roll forward, we're in our chair plank, and then inhale, lift that right leg, exhale down, inhale, lift, zip up your core, exhale down. Now we're gonna find a push-up if you desire. Now if you notice when we're doing gentle push-ups, we want to try and keep elbows over wrists. And then back, downward dog. Nice deep breath in. And let it go. Walking forward. Inhale, straight spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. And now step back. We're going to do one more of those. Nice deep breath in. And nice deep breath out. Now roll forward. Zip up. Chair plank. Exhale, push down, inhale, push up, and press on back. Nice deep breath in, 
<sighs> nice breath out. And now walking forward, inhale, straight spine, exhale, fold, and then rounding all the way up, find your way to mountain pose at the front of your mat. Inhale, arms rise, clasp your left wrist, exhale to the right, inhale, rise, reverse your clasp, and exhale to the left. Inhale, rise, and exhale, again, if you want to utilize, fold forward. Inhale, straight spine. Exhale, push yourself back. Nice deep breath in. And nice deep breath out. And now as you come forward, I'm gonna show you how to find your way into more alignment as you're moving into warrior one. So you're gonna spin your back heels down. The toe is right up against the edge of this block here. Now, if our knee hits this chair or this block that I have here, that means you've gone too far. You're out of alignment. So if you're working and trying to find more alignment in your yoga practice, if you have your toes up and touching this, it, the knee should not get there. It should be over ankle or behind it. Now we're gonna square off our shoulders. We're gonna find our way into warrior one. Nice deep breath in. Nice deep breath out. Inhale. And exhale. Now from here, we're gonna utilize this awesome chair to come into a little bit of a balance. So you're going to bring your hands down. We're going into a warrior three now, utilizing our chair here. So again, you want to activate this right leg. Right big toe pushes down. Left foot is flexed. If at all possible, it's hip height. Our hip bone should be square to the floor, and our hands are resting here. Great opportunity. This is modified warrior three. If you want to try full warrior three, woo, you have the capabilities of trying to lift your arms, either out in front of you or airplane or heart center. Again, the block or the chair is always there. And then we're gonna come on back. Awesome. Now, another traditional posture you see all the time is triangle pose. I'm gonna show you how to use a chair to help aid in it. So if you notice, my right leg is right up against this chair. We're gonna take the other toes out to the side. You're gonna stretch that arm as far as it goes and then you're gonna plant right on your chair. You're gonna open up your top hip. And you want to then lift your other arm. Now, as much as possible, we want a nice straight line. So I have been doing triangle pose for almost 20 years. I have much more flexibility, right? Where I can create this straight line, if you notice, straight line, which gives me the capability of coming all the way down. But if you notice when I come down, my hip doesn't roll down. It allows me to stay nice and tall. So utilizing a block for someone that is dealing with tight legs is a great opportunity to allow yourself to have that prop. All right, then we're gonna bring that top hand to hip, inhale, rise. And then from here, we're gonna step our way back to the front of our mat in mountain pose. So you can move your prop back if you need to. We're gonna do the other side now. So inhale, rise, exhale, side stretch, either side. Inhale, rise, reverse the clasp, exhale, side stretch. Inhale, rise, and then exhale, plant down. Make sure your toes are right up against. Step back as far as you wanna go, back heel spins down. And again, make sure that knee doesn't touch. Rise up, nice deep breath in. Nice deep breath out. Inhale, and exhale, one more. And now we're moving into our balance, so left foot roots. Land down on your prop, flex your right, zip up your core, stay here, or you can extend the arms long. Your preference, airplane, or you can play with heart center, but you always have capability to come back. Balancing in yoga is about rooting in the floor, coming up, using your core. And then slowly planting down. And again, we're going to utilize that chair to come to the outside inhale stretch as far as you need to and then you find triangle remember open up this hip we should almost feel like we have a straight line and again triangle pose great opportunity for someone that is dealing with tight legs again if you have the capability you can lower but if you recall we have to try as much as possible to keep this straight line wherever you're at in triangle pose nice deep breath in Nice deep breath out, one more, and rising on up. And then from here, you're gonna step forward, mountain pose to the front of your mat again. 
Now we're gonna utilize this again for a really awesome pose that a lot of people cannot do in yoga because the balancing is difficult, which is called half moon. I'm gonna show you how to use the prop here to really be able to get into it. So half moon is generally come into, you're in a, generally in a warrior two. So I'm gonna have a start in a warrior two so that you can see how if you go to class, how you could utilize a chair in half moon. Warrior two, remember we're going the length of a mat. We have back arch, front heel alignment. The arms are going the length of our mat. Now we're gonna zip up. We're gonna bring that right toe down. We're gonna see now if we can just lift up onto our prop. This will give us the balance we need. Hand to hip can really help with balance. Now push that right big toe down. This is where you wanna see if you can stack your hips. You have your left hip on top of your right. Now you could raise the arm, now you are in a modified half moon. Now I'm gonna show you what full half moon looks like if you ever wanted to get there, which obviously you're lower to the ground. It makes it much more difficult Utilizing a prop like this can remember, as I said before, give you the strength that you need to get to the full pose. And we're gonna come on back, lower down, step forward, inhale, rise, and then exhale, extend back, warrior two, other side. So get those toes right up to that prop, back arch, front heel alignment, nice deep breath in, nice deep breath out, inhale, and exhale. Now we're going to launch. So hand to hip can help. Try and launch up. Use the prop. Right foot flexes. Stack your hips. That big toe pushes down. You can lift the hand. Nice deep breath in. Nice deep breath out. Inhale. Exhale. One more. And then exhale. Coming on back down and stepping forward mountain pose. And just closing the eyes, hands come to your heart center, nice deep breath in. And exhale. We're going to slowly find our way down. I'm gonna show you how to go into a squat pose utilizing a chair. So if you take the heels and the toes out and you start to come to a squat pose and you're somebody that has really tight hips, you can begin to bring this prop right up against your chest and you almost hug it on into your chest. You can come around and you can really breathe in. This will help your inner thighs open up so that eventually you could come down into a full squat pose. To get to a full squat, you really have to breathe into those inner thighs and it can be a little intense for some people. So being able to hug something can be really beneficial while you're feeling a little more tension. This will give you the capability to stay grounded so you don't overstretch your inner groin. Not a fun place to overstretch, right everybody? So from here, we're gonna take three nice deep breaths. <sighs> Inhale. And exhale. Breath in. Breath out. Last one. And breath out. And now pushing into your prop, you're gonna come on back up. And then bring those legs wide. We're going to move into a modified pigeon pose. So this is great if full pigeon, which I'm going to show you for just a moment, all the way on the ground, does not serve you, where it bothers your knee or you're very wobbly. A modified pigeon can help get you the stretch. So you bring your leg up onto your prop. You want to make sure that your knee and your ankle are supported and you have a portion of your thigh supported on the prop. I'm gonna show you what that looks like from the side view. So my whole hip really isn't on this prop. When you're on a real chair, you're gonna have probably about the same amount of length. So you have to adjust according to your chair. Now, if you notice, my back toes are tucked under and then I'm supporting here on the ledge. If you have a chair with a backing, then you can either grab the back of your chair or you can just plant your hands right in the back of the chair. Now, to deepen it, you can, if you have space, bring your forearms down. You can also do this with your chair pointed to the side. So the back of your chair is right here. So you have capabilities on both sides of your chair. Now, to intensify this, if you have the capabilities, you can untuck the back toes. You don't want to sickle that foot in, but you take some nice deep breaths here. You can untuck the toes. That's how you'll have to get out of the pose. 
One more deep breath together. And then exhale. You're going to plant the hands. You're going to step on out of the pose so you can come on to the other side. And again, find your alignment first. One hip is very different than the other. And take some deep breaths. Pigeon pose a lot of times, whether you're in this modified version or not, it takes a couple breaths to get into the pose. You really want to breathe into the pose. Again, if you want to untuck the toes, that gives you a more intensified stretch. But you've got to use your core still. Activate your core. We don't mind tweaking that ankle or those knees, right? Or you can keep the toes on or keep the toes tucked under. Nice deep breaths here. Again, this is an awesome modification for people that can't do real pigeon on the floor. All right. If the toes are not tucked under, tuck the toes, plant your hands, and find your way slowly out of the pose. And now we're going to begin to come down into that squat again to come to a seated position. All right, now we're going to utilize this prop to aid in a nice relaxation pose. Now, desk chair or a chair that doesn't have wheels, anything is really great for this, but I'm going to show you an awesome modification to do plow pose, which gives you a wonderful stretch. You can only do that with a chair that doesn't have any wheels. So plow pose traditionally, I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's pushing on up. I'm going to move my prop. Hold on. I'm going to move my prop. There we go. Pushing on up and then allowing your legs to come all the way over. Tucking the toes or untucking. You want to get the stretch in your back and you never want to look from side to side. Most people look at this and they're like, oh no. Like, I'm not going to be able to ever do that. You want to support your low back, and this could even be a modified shoulder stand, which I've taught in classes before. But if you want to utilize that back stretch with a prop, it is possible. So you get your prop. Now, some people say if it's all the way close to your head, you're not going to be able to utilize it. You sometimes have to test it out to see what distance works for you. I like just a little bit away from my head. And then I got to push on up so I can get to my tush and then push my tush up and then find my prop. With the prop there, I'm still getting a stretch, but I'm not feeling as intensely. Now you can't even tuck your toes under, lift the heels and allow yourself to feel the stretch. You have to protect your low back though, hold on to it and never look from side to side. Modified plow pose. You can even come all the way over, give the shoulders a nice stretch. Now in this pose, I am not putting any weight in my head. My arms are active. My core is active. Nice deep breaths. And then begin to slowly, slowly, slowly come out of the pose. Allow yourself to come on down. You're going to hug your knees and then rock a little from side to side. Now we're going to slowly move in. To a modified Shavasana with our legs up, utilizing our prop. So if you need that relaxation oil, feel free to honor that. You're going to come on up to your prop. So this is a modification for legs up the wall. You're going to imagine like your chair is a wall. So one hip has to come all the way up and you allow your legs to come on up to your prop. This is a gentle inversion. Getting your relaxation oil out, we're going to take some nice deep breaths. Inhale, and exhale. So you breathe in, imagine the word let. And as you breathe out, the word go. Giving yourself permission to let go of anything physically, mentally, or emotionally that does not serve you. So you have space for what does. And then taking one to two more let go breaths and then resting here in stillness for Shavasana.
and then begin to deepen the breath, wiggling fingers and toes, rolling wrists and ankles. Inhale, extend the arms long, nice long stretch, and then exhale, again, rock from side to side. Massage your back, let yourself roll into fetal pose, and just for a moment, stay surrendered into the floor. And then using the weight of the floor, so you bring your hands on the floor, your head and neck stay relaxed. You find your way slowly out of the pose, coming to an easy seated pose. Whether you're in cross-legged here or you desire to come on up, finding your way back to your chair. As the hands find their way to heart center, thumbs rest against your sternum. As we recommit to our intention, taking a breath in, and exhale, head moves towards the hands, the mind and heart honor and acknowledge this intention. May you all be happy, healthy, live with ease. As always, the goodness in me honors and acknowledges the goodness in you, which means namaste. Slowly coming out of your sequence, grabbing your citrus oil. And we'll all together deep breath in. <sighs> I like to squeeze my ears a little. Deep breath in. A little scissoring wakes you up. One more. <sighs> you can even pull your ears up. And you are back to the room. So again, that was a sequence that you can use utilizing this block is what I showed as a regular chair. And then there was a few sequences I offered in the beginning that you could do right at your desk that are amazing to do when you're sitting at work or in the middle of the day when you're feeling a little sluggish. If you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. I am really here for people to feel more connected to their bodies, listening to their bodies' messages, and finding ways to pleasurably move. As always, the oils that I used for our class is the yoga kit from doTERRA, which is a line, and a line is florals, mints, and citrus to help with meditation. Anchor is what we just used for Shavasana. This has got earthy, woody oils for relaxation. And then Arise was my blend of citruses that we just came back to the room with. Have a fantastic rest of your day. I look forward to being with you again real soon. If you are watching this live or catching the replay this week, we're gonna be at 2 p.m. Eastern time the rest of the week. And then moving into next week, we are moving to 10.30 a.m. Eastern if you wanna catch it live. But the replay is always available on my Facebook page, as well as in other areas too, like YouTube. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. Be well.